David Freiheitz uh, is our next guest here, uh, right to my left. Uh, David is uh, known online as Viva Fry. He's a former Montreal litigator turned Florida rumbler. He began his law practice at one of Canada's largest law firms. Uh, after, birth, after the birth of his first daughter, he began his solo practice, which he turned into a successful and reputable boutique uh, litigation firm. He then discovered his true calling in life, trying to make sense of the world in which we live. He has developed such a stellar reputation in the world of legal and political commentary that even Google Gemini has difficult saying, difficulty saying anything bad about him. <laughs> well, David? Well, I was going to say, if the only thing the government did was to identify problems, that would already be a better start than what we're at right now. I think they manufacture fabricated problems so they can then mm. propose solutions to problems that don't exist and only empower themselves even more. C11, C18, C63. And, like, it's, 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 it's wild because C11, which was Online Streaming Act, what was the problem? I mean, the problem was from the government's perspective, there was free speech on the internet and they weren't making money off of it and they weren't suppressing it or silencing it for what they considered to be disfavored political speech. So they manufacture a problem and then if you come out and say this is unnecessary, well then you're anti-Canadian, you're anti-Canadian content. Um, C18, the link tax, uh, I don't believe there was any problem there except to find another way to indirectly subsidize failing, flailing Canadian legacy media. And the, 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 the solution that Google has, I don't know what is it, it's, it's um, how much, 100 million a year now that's going to be going to accredited media, journalists or organizations that employ enough journalists beyond a certain threshold, the government's going to decide. So it's just one way of controlling independent voices and the internet is the last wild west where people like me can say things that will sooner than later be deemed to be hate speech. Just right. Stick with you for a second. Good point. We'll stick with you for a second. On, on the first entry into the big foray entry into the online regulation that they did with C11 on kind of the content side, do you think it's really set the stage uh, or, or poisoned the well, so to speak, kind of for future iterations or entries into, into, this, into this regulatory world? Do you think they, have you seen any kind of big changes in the landscape, the way people have reacted to that, that really kind of set the skeptical you know, world uh, ablaze with anything they would try to do uh, with regards to C18 or even C63. I think uh, the, the well was probably poisoned well before that. I mean, nobody's trusted uh, Trudeau for a little, a little bit of time. The problem is it sort of might have poisoned the well with respect to the conservatives who petitioned or campaign off revoking a law that hadn't been enacted yet as opposed to just opposing it staunchly before it gets enacted. But this is, who, who was it? It's one of the Greek philosophers. More laws, less justice. This is just another way for the government to control speech in an area where it didn't control it and continue to benefit its, I'll call them corrupt, but rather the legacy media that is failing on its own merits and they need legislation, prohibitions, and indirect funding in order to survive. Fair enough. Yeah. Well, if I ask an obvious question, why would the collapse of the MSM be a problem and not a solution? Because, well... well. <laughs> Because, because I mean, if they can't, the reason why they're going to collapse is not because people are sabotaging them. It's because they're sabotaging themselves because they are no longer independent media. They are government lackeys, and they this, work for this, the government. And this, and this is why funding them is a problem. No, I so I say the, the, colla the collapse is the solution. Yeah. Let them survive on their own merits, like the Rebel News, I, like the True North I, out there. I, I completely, as an independent media who is making some, some re making a wage, I agree and, with you. And, and I think leaving it to the open market, people will listen to what they want to listen to. What Absolutely. is good news and reliable will survive. The, I agree. The bad conspiracy theorists get out it. It's not. It's like. And, and I'm not using the word conspiracy theorist loosely, but the bad ones get outed. The discreditable ones get discredited, and That's then people fine. stop listening to That's them. That's fine. But w, w5 is the one that ran a small hit piece on me to run a bigger hit piece on well, Rumble. I'm but sorry, I'm not that you, I have no, anything no, against them. No, no, no disrespect, but uh, you know, streaming from Boca or blogging from my office is not news. It might get audiences, it might be able to sustain people, but it doesn't actually uh, That's allow That's the craziest people thing I've ever heard, Michael. I mean, streaming decisions. from Ottawa, streaming from Ottawa, one dude with a, with a camera is local news that is value-added, that gets supported by the locals who want to see it and others who want to see it. And I do I th think, I think and the, there's a space for that. Yeah, but entertain, like entertainment isn't the same as news. To, to purport to um, label the difference between entertainment and news is the type of thing that leads to someone trying to define hatred and criminalize it. I don't know what you think is entertainment versus what you think is news. But uh, entertainment can be news, and news can be entertainment. Of course it can. And, and the more accurate when it comes to news, it is what succeeds over time. But the other thing is, going back to what you said earlier, that you do identify problems. And then one of them you identified was revenge porn, which seems to me, I, I can see that's a problem. I would also argue that there already exist laws to deal with that, such that you don't need new ones. Bullying online, this is going to sound very mean. You don't have the right to go online and think you're not going to get bullied. And if you want kids to not get bullied online, have their parents watch what they're doing online. Laws to protect children from bullying, bullying online, is a doomed proposition that will only be used 
against politically disfavored speech, period. But they're going to throw the kids in there. Won't someone think of the kids? You don't have the right to go online and not get called names, period. And someone calls me a dirty Jew online. I don't want them prosecuted. I actually want them to have the right to do that because if you suppress their right to do that through the protection of the children pretext, you make the problem exponentially worse, as we've seen with each and every piece of legislation that gets passed to protect classes of people. The, pro the problem is, yeah, you, you want to... I don't know, stop amplification, stop people from saying hateful things in the streets. Uh, if it turns out that everything you're doing, and not you as a person, but the government is doing, as a, as a remedy, is actually exacerbating the problem, do you stop and say maybe more laws are not the solution? When you look at the ADL in the States, everything that they've done to purportedly curb anti-Semitism has exponentially exacerbated it, to the point where even I blame them. It's almost like they're out there deliberately to exacerbate a problem, so they can then propose solutions, all of which involve suppressing free speech. Well, here's a problem, uh, and a realistic one, where you go to Bill C-63, promoting, advocating genocide, potential life in prison. Yeah. Some people are going to say, keep us welcome here is genocidal talk. Some people are going to say that misgendering people is genocidal talk. They already say it. And so then you, you, you are, and I'm telling you, the, the, have you noticed the problems getting worse or better with each passing year of the Trudeau government and each passing legislation? It just gets worse. And I'm, I'm, I'm saying this, I'm saying this as a member of the community. Like I, I say, I, I'd never say as a Jew. I'm just noticing it gets worse. And I'm saying what you're doing is making it worse because you are protecting classes of people, breaking society down into groups of people that are individual classes that somehow get more protections than regular people. And it just makes it exponentially worse, but the opaqueness of the law is going to come back to bite in the butt the people who think it's protecting us. I want to read the, def the definition of hate speech. In this section, hate speech means the content of communication that expresses detestation or vilification of an individual or group of individuals on the basis of a prohibited ground of discrimination. And it says, it, does, it, it doesn't count if it's only disdain or dislike or seeks to discredit, humiliate, hurts, offense. Yeah, I mean, this is ridiculous. You're this is and you're legislating to morality. Yes, you're but back it up to the... Well, well, no, sorry, just, just so that morality, people but, understand the context, that language is literally derived directly from the Supreme Court of Canada. Yeah. It's not the government making this up. This sure. is directly how the Supreme Court of Canada has interpreted hatred. There, but there's also a reason why Canada has been the laughing stock of the international community for trying to regulate and prohibit thought crimes and morality. I mean, it, it's not, it's, it's, legislation can remedy the problems instead of ratifying the problems. Now, when it comes to child pornography, already illegal, already every mechanism under the law to deal with that. Sure, but when there, it comes isn't to revenge a, there, isn't, porn, there isn't a mechanism under the law to have it rapidly removed from the go internet. To, go get, in, get a, a so injunction that's, that's, or go get, a, t get a TRO. I mean, yeah, am, am I wrong in thinking that there's not already remedies to deal with child pornography yeah, online? You're, you're, <laughs> that's all the government does, is create a role well, for I, itself. Sure, it's, it's the ball. That's, that's the problem, well, not the solution. And like I said, if you, wanna, if, you, if you want to appease my libertarian cat instincts, I'm all for breaking it up. let's we can but. start with one. <laughs> Defund the CBC, period. That's $1.6 okay. billion. Dollars. I know that that's, no, I know that's going to be a really popular thing in this room. My argument isn't a defund. My mm. argument is a radical mandate review. This, this, this is the same archives. argument. Though, instead of like disband the FBI, disband the CIA, it's reform, re overhaul. At Correct, some point, they yes. become so fundamentally rotten and corrupt, they cannot be overhauled. Start from scratch, at least on one thing. Okay, we could, I love, we could look, probably, look, look, we could probably spend an hour on the CBC. <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 we said we wouldn't do that. Okay. In terms of some of the kind of speech that they regulate, the, U, the UK, for example, goes further than this legislation yeah, does. And, and they jail somebody for making a meme joke with their pug doing the Hell Hitler salute and put him in jail. I mean, the fact that there's other countries that are worse is the problem. It's an indication of where we're going, not an indication of where we should be going. Brazil's getting worse. At least we're not Brazil yet. I mean, the, the problem is, it's sort of like the Jordan Peterson thing. We're like, nudge, 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 back up. Nudge, 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 back up. And then in 15 years from now, you can't say F Trudeau on Twitter without going to jail. I mean, the, the fact that there's other countries out there that are worse is an indication of where things are going. Just, just to make sure I wasn't attacking Michael before, I was just saying, it, that, is the, that is the justification, or the, that is the thought process of many, say, well, let's compare ourselves to Brazil, let's compare ourselves to the UK, and let's judge uh, North Korea and Russia because they've gone too far. But you know, it's a bit of a straw, and nobody's saying no regulation whatsoever. I, I would say litigation over legislation is a, better, is a better solution to problems. When people suffer the consequences with their dollar, they'll make the changes on their own without the government coming in, le le legislating for its own benefit. C63, C11, C18. I don't view these as, you know, individual separate legislation. This is an attempt to govern the last wild west of exchange of ideas, the internet. It's intended to empower the government, it's intended to prop up the legacy media through indirect subsidies that they can no longer get directly, because they've maxed out subsidizing the CBC and Radio Canada, they've maxed out bailing out print media, they've maxed out COVID ads for legacy media, and now they've got to go with the link tax, they've got to go with C63 to shut people up, and apply these, well they're not going to be applied fairly, period. 
and they're going to be applied for the political benefit of the political party in power. Which is why I don't necessarily trust the conservatives to, wheel, to pull these levers when they come into power, because everybody supports free speech until people use it to attack their power. Well, that's, that's another great point. If so I were to okay. challenge one thing you said, I would challenge the idea that MSM has more eyeballs on it now than ever. I mean, uh, my understanding. Yeah, I mean, is I'm happy to provide you the data on that if you I want. I will. I will look at that Absolutely. with a, with a please, uh, skeptical please eye, yep. um, because my, my, you know my, my my view is all they would have to do is compete honestly on the same platforms that independent if, media if, is if, succeeding. If, if you want on. Me to my break. bottom line takeaway from all of this is that the less government involvement in things of the utmost important of media, mm -hmm. the better. You, you, you yeah. can't have government involvement and then have it be independent anymore. Yeah, okay. and, and I don't... I, I, You're might be the fire on that one, man. I, I mean, and I don't trust the conservatives when they come into power to repeal the levers, the levers of power that they now have at their disposal. Mm -hmm. And so uh, it is... Whether or not it's a, a number of reasons why the model is failing, at some point, What's that movie? Uh, it, was a, it was a Dr. Seuss, Let It Die, but you say, let yeah. it die, something new will come out of the ashes. Or independent, and they'll find a way to survive. The problem is, yeah, when right. you get handouts, you don't have the urge, the need to survive, thrive, yeah, it, and it, evolve. It, it, you go to it, the States, you'll have more independent, I mean, you still have the problems with the Fox News and the CNNs and talk about pandering to bases or whatever, but that's considered to be the, the, you know, the objective news when in fact the independent voices are succeeding, and I dare say, not right. because they're targeting their own echo chambers, but because they are being more responsible than we have discovered mainstream media has ever been. This problem has been I mean, maybe I, 100 years in the making.